Hopefully nobody's craving French fries too badly after me. <laughs> and hopefully someday it takes longer than 60 seconds to tell the story of my life. But until, uh, until then, I think they did a pretty good job. Uh, and it's a true story. Uh, I grew up on a farm. I grew up baling hay and milking cows, uh, you know, doing the work that you do when you live on a farm. I don't know if any of you have grown up on a farm, but one of the, uh, the, the truisms of being a kid on a farm and doing that work is that uh, you do anything you have to to get out of doing it. And for me, it was always about sports. You know, the excuse was always that I had a baseball game to go to or I had to go to swim practice or go run around with my friends playing soccer. And these activities that I did, these sports that I pursued when I was a kid, were really were you know, the way that I defined myself as a, as a young Canadian growing up. Most of all, whether it was basketball or tennis or baseball, uh, you know, above all else, do the math, figure it out, it was hockey. You know, if I had a hockey stick in my hand, whether it was on a pond or in a rink, I was the happiest kid in the world. Most of all, though, it was street hockey. And I can't tell you how many times I survived the school day by just imagining what it would feel like to get back out onto the street, playing street hockey with my friends, and dreaming about being the guy who scores the goal to win the cup. You know, it was just such a, an overwhelming dream that I had, and I think a very common one for kids growing up in Canada. We all face uh, situations in our lives when we sometimes, our lives take detours and deviations that are unexpected. Sometimes they're, they're unexpected and, and welcome, other times unexpected and very unwelcome. I had one of those moments when I was nine years old. I had had a childhood cancer when I was a year old and walked away from it. I had experimental radiation therapy, experimental chemotherapy uh, at that age when I was one. Um, it was back in the 70s when uh, they really were just starting to try to figure things out. And so they cured my cancer, they saved my life. And what we didn't know at the time is they also burned my spine with the radiation therapy. So like I said, I walked away at a year old, grew up playing sports, chasing these dreams. And then at nine years old, one of those burns blistered and burst and caused a spinal cord injury. And so at nine, I was checked into a hospital uh, and they spent a year trying to figure out what was going on. And back then, there weren't the same kind of diagnostics that there are today, so I didn't have an MRI. Um, and we spent a year trying to figure things out. It was an incredibly difficult time, mostly for my parents. I mean, as a nine-year-old kid, it was just kind of one of those things. I didn't really, it didn't dawn on me what was happening. But leaving the hospital, the reality was that I had to use a wheelchair for everything that I did. And we had spent so much time in the hospital trying to figure out what was going on and trying to teach me the things that I would need to do to live my life using a wheelchair for everything. And we forgot about a few little details. One of them was the two stairs to get back into my house. And I remember so vividly, and you saw that on the video, the first time I went home, I had to be helped back into my house. And I had to be lifted up the stairs. And I think that was when it really dawned on me that, you know, wow, everything is going to be different. You know, not just the way I get around, but getting in and out of my house, uh, relating with my brothers and sisters, getting back to school, how are the kids going to react to me? And I just remember going through that process of that big oh no moment. And it was all because of being helped into my house. Now I was lucky. Um, my dad was a farmer, a welder, he built things. And again, you saw it in the video, he built a ramp. And so I used the technology, the help that my father gave me and the technology that we had access to of the ramp to get, start getting in and out of my house on my own. And it was an enormous moment for me to be able to have that kind of autonomy back again. Really meant, though, that I was able to get back to doing the things that I love to do. Um, believe it or not, going back to school and hanging out with my friends. Uh, but most of all, it meant that I would be able to play with them again, to do the sports that I loved so much again. And I couldn't wait to get back to playing street hockey. And I remember that so vividly the first time that I went out and, and uh, played street hockey again. I had a hockey stick in one hand and a wheelchair in the other. And... Uh, wasn't scoring too many goals. Uh, none, actually. <laughs> um, and we, uh, you know, I quickly realized that it wasn't going to be the same playing street hockey either. And I, just, just, I was so disappointed and devastated that this game that I loved was not going to be available to me anymore. And so I was extremely lucky again. I had a bunch of brothers who really cared about me. I had some friends who wanted to make sure that I could play with them. And even at you know, nine or ten years old, we realized that we needed to work together to solve this problem. So we did that. We got together and we talked about how we were going to change the game that we played so that I could pr keep participating. And what we decided to do was to take a, a net and stick it in the middle of the street and take a stool and stick it in the middle of the net. And I would sit on the stool and play goalie. 
We got, we, got, we got some funny looks, because, you know, you'd hear one kid would yell car and drag the net out of the way. <laughs> Another kid would drag me out of the way. And, uh, but, uh, but the point is, the point is that I was dreaming again. And uh, I wasn't dreaming about being the guy who scored the goal to win the cup. I was dreaming about being the guy who stopped the puck to win the cup. Slightly different dream, slightly different way to get there, but the end result was the same. I was dreaming again. And I was doing that because we were able to work together. We identified a barrier. We decided we were not going to let that barrier stop us. And we worked together to decide how we were going to get over that barrier.